So N8 Engines released a new tool called Think, which was inspired by Entropic, and it is designed to help AI agents by giving them a dedicated space for them to pause mid-process and reason about their current context. And you might actually be wondering what the difference between this and the reasoning capabilities of the reasoning models are. And the difference is that the reasoning models actually go through a process of extended thinking before they even generate a response. But in the case of the think method, we are passing the agent an actual tool that it can use in between steps to add an additional layer of reflection and planning, which supposedly leads to better results. So you can simply think of it as a dedicated scratch pad that the agent can use in the middle of a complex process. All right, so before we get to testing this tool in N8N, let's first go through the article published by Anthropic so that we can get an even clearer understanding of what exactly this tool is, what performance gains they saw in AI agents that actually use this versus the ones that didn't, and also look at when we should actually use this tool and when we shouldn't, and when we do use it, how we can do so effectively so that we get the most out of it all right so the title reads the think tool enabling cloud to stop and think in complex tool use situations okay and when we scroll down we can see that this is what the tool looks like under the hood and this is also the case for what we have here in n8n where when you actually click on it right you can see that the description for this tool that is set by default is exactly the same as the one that is set by Anthropic. And so what this means is that what we see here under the hood looks like this when we look at its code, okay? And here is talking about the performance on T-Bench, which apparently stands for Tau Bench, and it is a comprehensive benchmark designed to test a model's ability to use tools in realistic customer service scenarios where the Think tool is part of the evaluation standard environment, okay? And in this case, what this benchmark uh, evaluates is Claude's ability to navigate realistic conversations with simulated users. And in this section, it talks about the configuration of agents they use to put through this test, right? In this case, we have baseline that doesn't use any think tool or no extended thinking mode. So we can basically think of it as their base model, such as Claude Sonnet 3.7. And then there's the extended thinking mode version alone without any think tool. And then they got the think tool alone. And finally, they also had think tool with optimized prompts, which in this case is for the airline domain. And the results showed dramatic improvements when Cloud 3.7 effectively used the think tool in both the airline and retail customer service domains of the benchmark. In the airline domain, the think tool with an optimized prompt achieved 0.57 on the past one metric compared to just 0.37 for the baseline, which is a 54% relative improvement which is actually very powerful right that's that's dramatic and then in the retail domain it says the think tool alone which is not the think tool with an optimized prompt right so it's this one here think tool alone achieves 0.812 compared to 0.78 for the baseline which was already very high to begin with so i'm guessing that the complexity for the retail domain is far simpler compared to the airline domain but one question i'm asking now is why did they have to use the think tool alone in this case when they use the think tool with an optimized prompt for the airline domain right that makes me think like they didn't get the result they expected so they just throw in the think tool which probably achieved similar result in this case and in the bottom here we see the full complete uh, test results and we can see how the line that is in purple represents the think plus prompt and it is clear that it do, it does perform far better compared to all the other three configurations here. And the second one is the extended thinking mode, which also performed far worse compared to the Think Plus prompt. And also just to note that this is for the airline task, right? And when we look at this diagram, we can actually see a clear improvement when they use Think Plus prompt here. And when they use just Think alone, it did have some improvements compared to the baseline, but definitely far worse compared to when they use tailored prompting. So I think this is an important thing to note when using this tool, right? Is that we need to tailor our prompts for this tool based on the domain that our agent is operating in. So definitely let's note that down. Speaking of which, by the way, I already added the key snippets from the article into the canvas 
And as always, I am going to be uploading this workflow to my school community. So if you haven't yet, feel free to join as it is completely free. And once you're here, you can head over to the YouTube video and resources section and find the post associated to this video, which obviously I haven't posted yet. Right. But once I do, you can go ahead and click on it and find the JSON file attached to the post. And once you download it, you can head over to your canvas, click on this three dotted button here, click on import from file and select the file that you just downloaded and you should be good to go. Right. But let's continue with the video now. So this is the result right for the airline task based and you can definitely see that this tool here does seem to be promising especially in complex domains and when we scroll down we can see the numerical version of the same results here and i'm just gonna go over that so they're saying that the best performance in the airline domain was achieved by pairing the thing tool with an optimized prompt that gives examples of the type of reasoning approaches to use when analyzing customer requests below is an example of the optimized prompt essentially this is the prompt that they use for the ai agent in order to guide it on how to actually use the think tool right and we can actually see that they attach two separate examples think tool example one and then we got think tool example two and each of them is they're basically breaking down what it should do in each of these scenarios here which is again something that we should definitely take note of when we want to use this tool so here we can see the result on the retail task right and we can see that the baseline did perform very well to begin with and interestingly it actually did even better than the extended thinking version and when we look at tool plus no prompt it did perform the best here but interestingly they did not include tool with prompt and like i said this does make me come up with some questions right but all in all, this is the result for the retail task, which again, these results suggest that this tool works far better in complex domains. And of course, that works with us, right? So the key insights from the T-Batch analysis was that prompting matters significantly on difficult domains, right? And then improved consistency across trials, saying the improvement from using Think were maintained for past K up to K5, indicating that the tool helped Claude handle edge cases and unusual scenarios more effectively. And the K that it's referring to here is essentially the number of executions and the consistency across these executions, right? So they're saying essentially that using this tool did help with the consistency of running the agent and putting it through multiple tests. And here they talk about when to use this tool and they're saying to use it when Claude needs to carefully process the output of previous tool calls before acting and might need to backtrack in its approach and then in policy heavy environments when Claude needs to follow detailed guidelines and verify compliance and sequential decision making when each action builds on previous ones and mistakes are costly often found in multi-step domains and they also provide us with implementation best practices which again are also included here right so you guys can just refer to this and of course you can head over to this article i added the link to the article here as well click on this and it will take you to this exact same article but the best practice one here is to strategic prompting with domain specific examples just like what we saw above where it was instructing the ai agent on how it can use the think tool and also provided it with domain specific examples of how to behave in different scenarios right so that's what it is referring to here and it says place complex guidance in the system prompt we found that when they were long and or complex including instructions about the think tool in the system prompt was more effective than placing them in the tool description itself this approach provides broader context and helps the model better integrate the thinking process into its overall behavior which is also an interesting tip right and that is also the reason why i actually added the prompt for this think tool inside the system prompt for this example right and i just kept the description here to be the default for now because of that and then they talk about when not to use the think tool and they're saying if Claude only needs to make a single tool call or multiple parallel calls to complete a task, there is unlikely to be any improvement from adding in Think, right? Basically, if the tasks that the agents are responsible with is very simple, it's saying, hey, you don't even need this, right? And especially if you're not calling multiple tools. And then the second reason they say that we don't need this Think tool is for simple instruction following, right? When there are not many constraints to which Claude needs to adhere and its default behavior is good enough, there are unlikely to be gains from additional thinking. Basically saying that if the task that you are doing is simple, 
then you don't even need this, right? All right, so now that we have finally gone through the article and looked at exactly what the Think tool is, we can now look at it in action in N8N. You can see that I have two agents prepared here, one that represents when to use this tool and the other one represents when not to use this tool. And we already went through these rules in the article, but I've also attached these sticky notes here to repeat them. And when you look at the agent to the left here that represents when to use this tool, this agent is actually from my supervisor architecture video and it was used as an example on how not to build an agent but in this case it serves the purpose of this video so i was like i'll just use this example right and you can see here that we have this thing tool attached and like i said earlier i didn't change the description for it i just kept it the way it was by default right so what we have to the left here is a personal assistant agent that has access to a bunch of or many tools in this case right it has access to gmail it has access to calendar and it also has access to crm and slack based contacts of course in this case i mocked these data that's being returned using code nodes for both of it so you can see these are obviously fake data what i did was i essentially implemented this thing tool in here since the type of tasks we can provide to a personal assistant agent may require multiple steps for example i can tell it to do something like generate a calendar event and then send an email to somebody based on it right and this is actually the example we are going to be looking at anyway so the way I implemented this was, like I said, I kept the description as what it already was. And inside the system prompt, just like what they recommended in the article, I added a section where I explained to this agent how it can use the thinking tool. And I gave it a description of the context here. I said, use the think tool before taking any action, especially if the user's request is unclear, incomplete, or could lead to mistake. And then I said, use it to list the rules that apply to the request, check if all needed information is present, make sure the action follows tool policies, review tool results for accuracy and conflicts, always check if an event already exists at the requested time. And you can see here it is using markdown format for bold text, right? To emphasize its importance. And then we say plan your next step clearly before proceeding. And just like in the example in the article, we are also providing it with example so we're like hey this is think tool example one and then think tool example two we are essentially telling it how to behave in certain scenarios so that it can behave consistently and now let's take a look at how this is all going to play out and then i'm going to paste in what i already have copied for simplicity it says hey can you please set a meeting with john doe for tomorrow and also send him a confirmation email regarding this and the meeting is going to be at 7 p.m for an hour I'm gonna click on enter and let's see what happens. So you can see that the agent starts processing it, right? And I'm expecting it to hit the think tool and that is what it did. So it essentially did exactly that, right? And we'll take a look at what it came or what input it passed the tool with. And, but let's just wait for this whole process to finish first. All right, now let's take a look at what the agent input into this tool. And we can see it says, let me analyze this request. User wants to schedule a meeting with John Doe tomorrow at 7 p.m. for one hour. User also wants to send a confirmation email about this meeting, steps needed, so on and so forth, right? So we can see that it indeed is using it as a scratch pad where it takes down nodes and decides on what steps to take in order to complete our request. And when we look to the right, the output is exactly the same as the input, right? So essentially, it's going to use its own input as the output to decide on what actions to take next. And one more thing I noticed here is that this tool was called at the very beginning instead of somewhere later in the process, which is also strange, like since uh, I feel like at this point, it would already be able to like reason through the process, right? So I would, I would have expected it to maybe at least call this tool one more time but maybe since this task wasn't that difficult it decided that it was enough to just call this once and decide the plan write it out and execute it according to that way right and another thing i noticed when i was working playing with this tool here is that anthropics claude is able to follow this instruction but when i tried doing this with open ai's for example gpt 4.1 it for some reason stubbornly did not want to call this tool almost like it has this internal politics going on like i don't want to use claude's tool or whatever right of course jokes aside but 
For some reason, that's what I noticed. All right, now I'm going to detach the Anthropic model and then attach to it GPT 4.1 so that we can see how it handles this request. And again, I want to see if it's actually going to be stubborn again and not call the Think tool. And for this, I'm just going to paste the exact same prompt here and click on enter so that we can see what happens, right? It's processing the request. And again, as you can see, GPT-4, like chat GPT just does not like calling the Think tool for some reason, despite having it explicitly specified in the prompt to use it. So maybe this task is just too simple for 4.1 and in com more complex tasks, it might decide to use it. But uh, up till now, my observation was that Claude does adhere to the instructions specified in the prompt to use this tool, while GPT-4.1, not really. And since this tool is really new, I didn't really have much time to exper experiment with it anyway. So I would love to hear about your experience using it. But what we have here is the second example, which is of course the example of when not to use this tool. In this case, we have a complaint agent and what it does is a user can submit a complaint, right? And let's, let's actually take a look at how the form looks like. So the user passes in their full name, their email and their complaint. And the job of this agent is to just get the information, the details from this complaint and add it into the complaint sheet and then generate a personalized consolation email to basically make the customer feel better, right? And in most cases, the agent just decides to run this parallelly in one step anyway. So I thought this would be a good example of when not to use this tool. But yeah, that's pretty much the video. I hope it was informative for you. and. As I said, I didn't really get a lot of chance to experiment with it yet, but I'm definitely planning to. And as I learn more, I'm going to be sharing it with you guys, either in the, through the community or even post another video if it's worth it. And if you did find this video valuable, a like or a comment would really be appreciated as engagement goes a long way. But with that said, I'll see you in the next one.